Today's topic is thermodynamic potentials. Okay, we have gone through zeroth law of thermodynamics, first law and second law. Zeroth law of thermodynamics has given the concept of temperature. First law of thermodynamics, which is a consequence of conservation of energy, has given the concept of internal energy. Okay, third law, second law of thermodynamics has given the concept of entropy. Okay, now the first law equation is delta Q equal to du plus PdV, where du is change in internal energy, PdV is the external work done, delta Q is the amount of heat given or taken from the system. Okay. Second law of thermodynamics has defined change in entropy as ds is equal to delta Q by T. Therefore, I can write delta Q equal to TDS. This is the mathematical statement of second law of thermodynamics. Okay. Now, I'll combine these two. Write TDS equal to du plus PdV because delta Q equal to TDS. I'll write like this. This is the combination of first and second law equation combining both first and second laws of thermodynamics. Okay. Now, I'll define for uh, thermodynamic potentials which are nothing but energy functions okay which are nothing but energy functions as the first one is internal energy okay first one is internal energy u okay second one is enthalpy enthalpy okay h Third one is Helmholtz free energy. Free energy F. Fourth one is Gibbs free energy. Free energy denoted by G. Okay, these are known as thermodynamic potentials, which are nothing but nothing but energy functions. Okay, now we have to see one after the other. Now, according to the combination of first and second laws, TDS equal to du plus PdV. Now I'll write du from that equation as du equal to okay du equal to TDS minus PdV. We write okay minus PdV. This is the governing equation for changes in energy. I'll take it as equation 1. Okay, du equal to TDS minus PdV. This is the governing equation for the change in internal energy, which is I'm defining it as a thermodynamic potential. Okay, now in an isochronic process, in an isochronic process means volume remains constant. Okay, when volume is remaining constant, dV equal to 0, work done by the gas or on the gas will be equal to 0. PdV when equal to 0, what happens? du equal to TDS. DU equal to TDS. Okay. What is TDS? Amount of heat given to the system or taken from the system. So, whenever you give some heat delta Q, right, TDS, internal energy increases by the same amount. Okay. Whenever you take out heat from the system, internal energy is decreasing by the same amount. Means what? Internal energy is a measure of heat content in the system. In the very beginning of thermodynamics, we have seen that, right, uh, amount of heat work, both heat and work are similar. I cannot show you any system and say that system has this much amount of heat energy. Okay, I, all I, I can do is what? I can only measure the amount of heat given to the system or taken from the system, that's all. Okay, I cannot say this pen has this much amount of heat energy or this what you call object has this much amount of heat energy. When I combine these two, right? All that I can do is what? When I combine these two, right? If the amount of heat that flows from one object to another object, only that can be measured. Heat is a concept of energy, right? In transit, we have seen heat comes into picture only when it flows, okay? Right? Absolute heat energy cannot be measured. That's what we have seen. But now here, what is happening? You take some system. Okay, you take some system here. Initially, I told you nobody knows how much amount of heat energy is present in the system. All that I can do is what? I can measure the amount of heat energy going into the system or coming out of the system. Okay, but now if the process is a reversible isochronic process, okay, means piston cannot move up or down, volume remains constant. Okay, whatever is the amount of heat energy I am giving, 
whatever is the amount of heat energy i am giving right heat energy is increasing by the same amount whatever is the amount of heat energy i am taking tds right heat energy is decreasing by the same amount means what right if i can measure the internal energy of the gas here right that gives me the heat content of the system okay now i can say this system has this much amount of heat energy provided it is a reversible isochoric process okay means that's why internal energy is known as the heat content of the system in a reversible isochoric process that is advantage of defining what you call internal energy which is a thermodynamic potential okay so what is the significance of internal energy it gives the heat content of the system in a reversible isochoric process okay constant volume process okay next one i'll define what is known as enthalpy okay right we define what is known as enthalpy enthalpy h is defined as u plus pv okay it is conveniently defined as h equal to u plus pv where u is internal energy p is volume and v is the sorry p is pressure v is volume of the system okay i'll call this as some small a okay right the definition of h equal to u plus p remember it, it can also be asked in the exams okay the expression for enthalpy h equal to it is u plus pv that's how i'm defining one new thermodynamic potential okay now changes in enthalpy dh equal to how do you write dh equal to du plus pdv plus vdp v d p okay right d h equal to i am differentiating this equation d u plus p d v plus v d p now d u plus p d v we have already seen as delta q delta q equal to from first law from the combination of first and second laws of thermodynamics d u plus p d v equal to t d s so i can take this d u plus p d v as equal to okay t d s therefore d h is equal to t d s plus v d p okay tds plus vdp this is the governing equation for right the changes in enthalpy i'll take this as my equation 2 okay dh equal to tds plus vdp now now consider now what is the significance of enthalpy okay what does it denote now we consider a reversible isobaric process okay in a reversible isobaric process pressure remains constant dp equal to 0 vdp equal to 0 so tds which is nothing but the amount of heat given delta q right is equal to dh okay is equal to dh okay right now whatever heat you are giving to system enthalpy increases by the same amount whatever heat you are taking out from the system enthalpy decreases by the same amount means what you give 10 joules of heat to the system system's enthalpy increases by 10 joules you take out 15 joules from system system's enthalpy decreases by 15 joules okay whatever is heat is giving or taking that is ref reflected as change in enthalpy okay but which type of process it is reversible isobaric process only the reversible isobaric process okay Ch amount of it changes in enthalpy right is equal to the amounts of heat given or taken therefore right you give 10 joules enthalpy increases by 10 joules okay you take out 10 joules enthalpy decreases by 10 joules okay now if you measure the enthalpy of the system it gives the amount of heat present in the system okay though we cannot value measure the absolute value of the amount of heat energy present in the system in some specific processes okay what is a specific process here in a reversible isobaric process okay systems enthalpy h is a measure of the heat content in the system okay you measure you know its internal energy you measure its pressure you measure its volume u plus pv will give you h okay h indicates the amount of heat content that is present in the system in which system which type of process in a reversible isobaric process so what is the significance enthalpy it is the heat content of a system in a reversible isobaric process we say means if you measure the enthalpy you know how much heat is present in the system provided the process is a reversible isobaric process okay right that's why it is also known as total heat okay enthalpy is also known as total heat sometimes okay total heat okay so dh equal to tds plus vdp is a governing equation for changes in enthalpy next one i'll define one more parameter called elmholtz free energy i'll define one more parameter called elmholtz free energy f is equal to right u minus ts i'll call this as small b 
Okay, this is how we define a useful, another useful thermodynamic potential, which is also an energy function as F equal to U minus Ts. Okay, so change in Helmholtz free energy, change in Helmholtz free energy, Df equal to du minus Tds minus SdT, I can write. Okay, du minus Tds minus SdT. Now, the, from the combination of first and second laws, what are we seeing? Tds equal to du plus Pdv, we have seen. Okay, so du minus Tds means take this Tds to the other side, bring that Pdv to this side, minus Pdv equal to du minus Tds, it will be. So du minus Tds, I can take it as minus Pdv and this is minus SdT. Okay, this is the governing equation for changes in Helmholtz free energy. I'll call this as equation 3. Okay, df equal to minus pdv minus sdt. This is the governing equation for changes in Helmholtz free energy. Now, in a reversible isothermal process, in a reversible isothermal process, okay, temperature remains constant, dt equal to 0. So, df is equal to minus pdv. Okay, df is equal to minus pdv. So, what is the physical significance of Okay, Helmholtz free energy in a reversible isothermal process. What is minus PDV work done on the system? Work done on the system. Whatever work we are doing on the system is resulting as increase in Helmholtz free energy. Increase in Helmholtz free energy. Okay, right now bring that minus sign to this side. You can as well write it as minus DF equal to PDV also. What is PDV? work done by the system in a reversible isothermal process work whatever is the work done by the system is equal to decrease in Helmholtz free energy okay means Helmholtz free energy if you can measure you can understand what is the work value of the system how much work you can extract from its system okay so Helmholtz free energy u minus ts is a measure of the amount of work that can be extracted from the system okay in which process reversible isothermal process okay now consider another process reversible isothermal isocaric process reversible isothermal isocaric process what will happen okay dt equal to 0 isothermal process isocaric process constant volume process dv equal to 0 so df equal to 0 okay that is what does it mean f equal to constant Helmholtz free energy remains constant okay constant means what it can be maximum or minimum energy functions when do we get stability when energy is minimum so right now i can give another statement also in a reversible isothermal isocaric process only those states of the system will be in equilibrium will be having minimum energy for which what you call f remains constant okay for which f remains constant only those states are stable in which the Helmholtz free energy is constant okay that's how we can interpret Helmholtz free energy f okay u is the it's a measure of heat content in the system we have seen t into s is amount of energy energy term only s represents unavailable energy entropy is a measure of unavailable energy we have seen so ts is a measure of unavailable energy from the total energy if you remove right unavailable energy you will get available energy means sometimes f is denoted with by a also and it is called as available energy okay what is the meaning of available energy energy which can be converted into work okay Helmholtz free energy is a measure of work content in the system okay in a reversible isothermal process whatever work you are doing on the system it increases Helmholtz free energy by the same amount whatever work is being done by the system Helmholtz free energy is decreasing by the same amount means Helmholtz free energy denotes the work value of the system okay or fuel I can say okay right I mean, system is what the whatever gas or anything what vapor you are taking sir what is the work value of that fuel we can be understood from Helmholtz free energy it is defined as u minus ts remember that okay enthalpy h equal to u plus pv that also keep in mind okay next one we'll go for the last thing what is called Gibbs free energy okay Gibbs free energy is defined as g equal to h minus ts h minus ts okay this is how gibbs free energy has been defined i'll call this expression as our equation c okay now what is change in gibbs free energy dg dg equal to dh minus tds minus sdt 
Okay, right. I'm differentiating this equation dh minus tds minus sdt. Now, what is dh? dh we have seen in equation 2 as what? dh equal to tds plus vdp. So, substitute the tds plus vdp here. Okay, dg equal to. Okay, dg equal to. Right, tds plus vdp minus tds minus sdt. Okay, now TDS, TDS gets cancelled, DG equal to, right, VDP minus SDT. This is the governing equation for changes in Gibbs free energy or Gibbs potential. I'll write it as equation 4. Okay, Gibbs free energy or Gibbs potential. Okay, DG equal to TDS plus TDS minus SDT, right. Okay, now look at this equation. If I say reversible isothermal process means dt equal to 0. Reversible isobaric process means okay dp will be equal to 0. So in a reversible isothermal isobaric process both dp and dt are becoming 0. dg equal to 0 means g equal to constant or uh, constant means it can be maximum or minimum. Energy term should always be minimum. So g should be minimum. Now what can we say? In, a, in such a process, which type of process it is? Reversible, isothermal, isobaric process. Only those states will be in equilibrium for which G is minimum. Okay. What are the examples of isothermal, isobaric process? Melting of ice, boiling of water. Okay. Till the last piece of ice also transforms into water, temperature of water will not increase, so temperature of ice will not increase, T pressure on ice also should not change, okay, right. So melting of ice is an isothermal, isobaric process. Similarly, boiling of water, when water is boiling, its pressure remains constant and its temperature also remains constant, till the last drop of water becomes vapor, steam, okay. So in such a process, G will be minimum. Okay, during that they are called first order phase transitions, which we'll be seeing in future videos. Okay, during first order phase changes. Okay, first order derivatives of Gibbs potential remain constant or minimum. That's why they are known as first order phase changes. Okay, right. So G is minimum. Only those states will be in equilibrium for which what you call G remains minimum. What is G? G equal to H minus T S. Okay. This G free energy, right, per molecule, once we go into statistical mechanics, we call it as chemical potentials, etc. Right, those things. But this is, these are the foundations for what we are going to study in statistical mechanics in future. Okay. Right. So these are the four thermodynamic potentials. Okay. They are, what are they? They are nothing but energy functions. Okay. What is the significance of them they give us right the heat contents and work values in present in the system in some specific process in general I may not be able to find out how much heat is present in a system or how much work I can extract from the system unless I perform okay but still right in when the processes are specific right we can understand how much heat I can take from that system how much heat is present in the system or how much work I can expect from that system etc things will become easy if you understand this thermodynamic potential Okay, significance from here onwards, we will go into what is known as Maxwell's equations in thermodynamics. Okay, that we will see in the next video. Thank you.